I'm, I'm going to preach. If you want to write this down, the title of this today is called Manhunt. Manhunt. God is on a manhunt. Just like some of you women were on a manhunt when you found that guy that you got there sitting beside you. You, were, you went on a manhunt and you found one and you were blessed. God is on a manhunt right now. Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30. King James. This is the Lord speaking. He said, I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. But I found none. How sad is that? God said, I'm looking for a man. I couldn't find one in the whole, in the whole town. He's speaking about Jerusalem. You know, before I go too much further, I, um, I want to say this. Too many biological males are not leading and living as they should. And a dad is not merely a male who is capable of impregnating a woman. That is not what makes a man a dad. A dad is a man who is capable, responsible, strong, present, and involved. He protects, he provides, he promotes his wife and his children. It's been said that if you want to show your children how much you love them, dads, love their mama. But any male who produces offspring and doesn't do these things that I just said is now my terminology, a slap and a loser. You say, man, you're coming right out of the gate this morning. I'm not going to take it easy on the fellas. And the word has this to say about him. It really doesn't matter what my opinion is. First Timothy 5 and 8 says, But if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially his family, he is denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Well, let's talk about what's an infidel. The definition of an infidel is a faithless, unbelieving heathen. <laughs> so... That person, by definition, is not a Christian. I don't know what he's calling himself. Because the scripture said he's worse than a complete unbelieving heathen. So all of you that have a, 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 a husband in your house who is a real man, a godly man, you should turn to him right now and say, thank you for being a good godly man. I'll give you a moment to do that. Some of you took advantage of it. Some of you didn't. The verse that I read to you as our text is a portion of Scripture where God is he's speaking to Ezekiel about the impending doom that's coming to Jerusalem because of the heinous sin that the people there were presently committing. And when you look at it, it's the same sins that they're committing then that we commit now. I mean... Man hasn't figured out how to sin better or different than he's been doing all along. And man's been figuring out how to sin for a long time. He figured it out pretty quick, even back in the garden. He figured out how to commit the worst sin of all before there was very many people even on the planet. One of them figured out how to kill another one before they even had their family complete. So they're comp they're, we're competing or com uh, committing... The same type of sin today that they were committing then. And judgment came to them just as what? Logically, judgment is what? Coming to us. Why is judgment coming to us? Because God is just. 
God cannot be just in one moment and not the next. God cannot be righteous here and not there. God cannot be holy here and not there. And so, of course, judgment is coming. Of course, we know that. Any of us that have read the whole Bible, read the book all the way from the front to back, we know what is coming. And so in this passage, the scripture says that God was looking for men who he didn't have to be angered by. He was looking for a man somewhere that didn't make him mad. And he couldn't find one in that city. Where are the good men, the godly men, the trustworthy men in the city? And so God begins to break it down. And he breaks it down station by station. It's interesting. Uh, there's four P's that represent the men in that city. Prophets, priests, um, princes, and people. And we're going to talk for a few minutes about what each one of those stations represent and how does it apply to us today. How are we kind of similar and what we need to do? So it turns out that those four categories of men in that great city were compromised beyond God's tolerance. The land was unclean and it was cursed. Why? Because these men had become so sinful, so unconcerned, and so disgraced. So Jerusalem was cursed because, number one, it tells us, her prophets conspired. How many of you were here two weeks ago? Were you here two weeks ago and you're back? Wow. Hey. Pat yourself on the back right now. You're the ones that can take it. Like a man. Even if you're a woman. You came back after two weeks ago. Probably you were hoping, well, it surely will never be like that again. And guess what? Here comes today. Jerusalem was cursed because, number one, her prophets conspired. Look at verse 25. A plot by her prophets is in her midst. Talking about Jerusalem is the her. Like a roaring lion tearing the prey, they have devoured souls. Who, who's devoured souls? The prophets. They have taken the treasure and precious things. They multiplied her many widows in her midst. That means they've, they have made things much worse than they should have been even. So let's talk about who are the prophets? The prophets then are the same as now. Some of them had a, 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 a role, uh, an opportunity more than some have now in that the prophet in that day was the person that was here on this planet to hear from God and then convey that information not only to the people but to the leaders of the nation. At which point you hoped the leaders would listen. And when the leaders listened, the scripture tells us in those cases, when the leaders listened, that the people would repent and sackcloth and ashes and pray and revival would come and good things would happen, la, 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 la. But when they didn't listen, what happened? Usually the prophets were killed. They didn't want to listen to them anymore. The people went on about their business and great judgment came to that place. And so... Here's what's going on. The, the prophet is the person that's responsible to tell the people what God is saying. What is God saying? It's not, we're not predicting the future. When we, when we are prophesying, we are proclaiming the truth or preaching the word of God, but we are also never getting away from the word, will, and way of God. But in those, within those parameters, that prophet then is under, within those parameters, he is then expressing to you this is what God is saying this is what God is showing me through his word through my prayer time through the things he is confirming to me this was the job it's not changed so what had the prophets in that day done the scripture said they had formed an alliance of conspiracy 
Are you there? They weren't hearing from God. Why? Because they were living in sin as much as the people were. So when you're a prophet and you're living in sin and you're incapable of hearing the word of God, what do you got to do? Make up one. Which is what they did. Which is what they do. Still. And so... They tell the people whenever you're when you're that when you're that guy, the easiest thing to do to keep your spot when you don't want to walk right and spit white and live like you're supposed to live, the easiest thing to do at that point is just tell people what they want to hear. I get to keep my position, I get to keep my station, I get to keep my power, I get to keep my control. As long as I tell you what you want to hear, you won't get rid of me. Let me tell you something about real prophets. The real prophet is the one that you're really not trying to keep too close because he's not fun to be around sometimes. <laughs> the real prophet says, hey, guess what God told me? And most people don't want to hear that because it's convicting to hear what the true prophet says. Hmm. Ezekiel 22 verse 28 says and then the prophets in Israel cover up their sins these sins by giving false visions I have never spoken to them but they lie and say they have a message from me oh my god I would be so fearful Bev, I would be so fearful to stand before God someday and be one of those guys. I'd much rather have you ostracize me, throw me in a pit, forget about me, than I ever would to have to stand before God and say, hey God, I told them you said when God said, I never told you nothing. You were in no position to hear what I was saying. You were too far from me to hear. You couldn't even hear me scream, let alone hear my whisper. Does it sound familiar? How many of these so-called so -called prophets do we have among us today that are making money hand over fist by selling books and prophesying lies just to keep their followers on social media? And they tell people about how blessed we're all going to be and how much money we're all going to have and how good things are all going to be when in fact the end is coming. That's the truth. And the best Christians are going to see won't be on this earth. It's going to be in eternity. The prophets that are telling you it's going to get great here are telling you what you want to hear. But it's not what God is saying. And false prophets say the same things. They have the same conspiracy going now that they had then. And they better understand that God is listening. And judgment is coming for them. And for the poor blind sheep that followed them. I'm saying to you church. Those of you that are watching by the live stream. You better seek out the real men of God in these last days. Or you're going to find yourself in a bad situation. And I'd also give you this advice. Walk closely enough to God yourself so you can hear him for yourself so that you don't have to rely on somebody else to tell you what God is saying. And then whenever you receive a true prophet, you can receive it by confirmation of what God has already told you. Don't let the word from the prophet be the first time you heard it. When you hear the real word from the prophet, you'll say, I believe that because that, that resonates in what God's been telling me already. It's simply confirmation. You walk close enough to God. Dads, you walk close enough to God. Don't get bogged down in all this. 
Don't get bogged down in all this mess that's going on. I don't care what they tell us is right and fair and kind and sweet. I think what we better do is stick to what the Word said. We don't have the right to change it. So the prophets conspired. There's another group in verse 26. The priests profaned. Look at verse 26. Her priests have violated my law, have profaned my holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and the profane. Neither have they shown difference between the unclean and the clean and have hidden their eyes from my Sabbaths and I am profaned among them. Let's talk about who these guys were. We know who the prophets were. Let's talk about who the priests are. What do we understand? We back in the day, they had the priest in the synagogue. What do we have today? The church and the pastor. So if we want to equate that, the priest would be the, either the priest of the Catholic church today or the pastor of, the, of, the, uh, of all of the other churches. We're talking, that's just so you understand what's going on. What were they doing? Well, this says that they were telling people that there was no such thing as sin. That's what the verse just said. They were telling the people that good and bad were the same thing. That sounds familiar. I've been hearing a lot of that too. I've been hearing a lot of folks that call themselves pastor trying to tell me that the Bible is outdated. That what was good enough for the goose ain't no longer good for the gander. I've been hearing some of that myself. Have anybody else heard anything like that? That somebody that comes along and says, doesn't matter what the book says, the book's out of date. Be you. Live however you want to live. Because God is a God of love and Jesus is forgiving. And the people that talk about sin are just dwelling in the Old Testament. They're just hanging around in the law. They don't want to hang around in the grace. I told you two weeks ago, Jesus didn't do away with the law. He fulfilled the law. He added grace to the law. But in no place did he ever take away the law. So that's why you still can't murder. You still can't steal. You still can't commit adultery. Although there are some who will tell you, that's okay. It's okay for you to live together outside of marriage. It's okay for you to engage in activities and relationships that you should not engage in. It's okay if you were born a man, if you want to be a woman. Or if you were born a woman, you want to be a man. It's okay if you're five years old and you want to have gender reassignment. And your parents are stupid enough to let you. Uh Uh-oh, he went there. Now we know what he believes. It's okay if you always want to use the same bathroom. It's okay if we'll just let the boys run with the girls. The girls don't mind getting beat up wrestling. The girls don't mind if they have to wrestle with the boys, if they have to box with the boys, if they have to compete with the boys. The girls don't mind. They've worked their whole life to get to do something. But it's okay if the boys want to come in now because they feel like a boy today. My goodness, where did all that come from, Pastor? I just don't see it. I, I see clearly defined differences in Scripture between men and women and how they look and dress. And you say, well, you're not going to go back there. I mean, no, I'm not going to go back there on the, on, the, on the whole dress thing. I mean, it, you get into the whole, well, it's a shame for a woman to cut her hair. It's a shame for a man to have long hair. I'd have long hair if I had hair. I did have long hair when I had hair. The dress thing is, 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 is it's not that, it, that that's been done away with, but I'm going to tell you something. If you dressed like a woman back then, it meant you wore the same kind of a robe or dress that the man wore. Because they, they didn't wear pants like we wear now. The men wore robes and the women wore robes. So if you dressed like a woman, I guess you was wearing a, a woman's robe. And if you dressed like a man, you was wearing a man's robe. It was, it was simply, it wasn't about the robe. It wasn't about pants and shorts and shirts and tea. It wasn't about that. It was about people understanding, clearly understanding the defined roles between male and female that God in Genesis said he created. He created male and female. He just did. Pastor, that's not fair. Tell him. 
All I know is his word says he is not the God of confusion. And anything that is confusing is not of God. So quit listening to people with smiles on their faces who talk about love and pretty rainbows trying to tell you that this is okay. I'm not angry. I love everybody. I'm not against anyone. I'm not trying to hurt anybody. I'm not trying to take away anybody's freedom or rights. I'm not trying to hurt anybody in any way. But I'm going to stand before the Lord someday and give an account. Did I preach his word or did I preach my own? The pastors now are getting up and telling their flocks, twisting scriptures to mean what they want them to mean. Why do they do that? Because it's a lot more fun to preach to full churches than empty ones. It's a lot more fun to have tithes and offerings than to have nobody there. Pastor, what you going to do when we all quit? I don't know. I'll, I'll probably be gone. If you'd have to get rid of me and I'll go preach in my house in my garage. And it'll be me and Deb and two or three others that can bear it. I guess. I don't know. I don't know, but I do know this. I'm not going to change. I mean, you got a decision you got to make. This is what it says. God is sovereign, folks. He's not confused. And I don't care what you call yourself. If you're not teaching the word of God as it's written, you are not a prophet and you are not a priest. You're simply a liar and a false teacher. And you're leading yourself and sadly many others to what the scripture calls a lake of fire that never stops burning. We don't get to change God's word. And the scripture talks about the people who try to do that. Revelation 22, 18, 19. For I testify together to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to these things, God will add on him the plagues that have been written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which have been written in this book. I don't want that to be me. Jerusalem had a problem. Their prophets were corrupt. Their priests were corrupt. Their princes were corrupt. Number three, the princes ravished. Look at verse 27. Her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves ravening the prey to shed blood and to destroy souls to get dishonest gains. That's why they did it, to get dishonest gains. Who are the, who are the princes? You ready for this one? The government officials. Here we go. You got your seat. Get, go ahead. Keep it ratchet, ratchet it up. You got it all. Ratchet it up. Not all government officials are crooks. We got some here in our own church that are amazing, wonderful men and women. And I'm proud of them. And, I, and all my praise and accolades go to them because they are doing God's work. They're doing God's work. We need more people to rise up. We need, more, we need more of the church sitting on school boards. The insanity. I told Deb the other day, every, I mean, I don't know how to do it. We may have to start a Christian school just to protect some of these kids from the mess. That's being indoctrinated into them. From well-meaning people Teachers who are well-meaning but are gullible enough to just teach whatever the curriculum says. And the curriculum is getting crazy. Whatever happened to the days of just two plus two is four. And here's the continents. And there's the United States and there's Canada. Can't be like that no more. Uh-oh, here he goes. If you live on this continent, you're racist. If you live on that continent, all I ever hear anymore is racist. You're racist for being born white. You're racist for not being born white. You're systematically racist just because you were born. You're inherently evil. Your country's a terrible place. This country that... That we got to change his flag. 
This flag don't represent every. It don't represent the men and women who died to give us the freedom that we have to be here right now saying what I'm saying. We need to change that flag because it doesn't represent. Who does it not represent? We got some problems in our government. And we got a lot of people. We got people right now that are very uncomfortable looking at me really strange. Because you're like, Pastor's insensitive. He's one of those old time politically incorrect idiots that we need to get rid of. I'm that, I, I want you to know something. I am that guy who they're going to try to get rid of. The government of the enemy is absolutely trying to get rid of voices like mine. Absolutely. The church is going to have to rise up the church is going to have to stand up. The church is going to have to quit trying to please the devil. You can't please the devil and the Lord at the same time. Quit trying to be kind and politically incorrect or correct and instead worry about loving people and preaching and teaching them the truth and living a godly lifestyle in front of them. I'm not, blam I'm not blaming so many of the good people that are out there in all of the different fields of education and, and, and all the places where the, we've got some wonderful, and we got a lot of great teachers right here in this room. I'm proud of them. But don't you be misled. You've got a Holy Ghost conviction in you. When you see something coming to you that they say you got to teach it, you know it goes against this word, will, and way of God, you say no, well, I'll lose my job. That's all right. God's got something better for you. No, I'm not worried about money. Are you worried about money when, when the Bible promises that, that every person that belongs to him, he knows he's even numbered the hairs or the lack of on their head? He knows. He says, if I'm able to, to clothe the flowers of the field, if I'm able to make sure that the birds have a worm, I can make sure that you have what you need. And he said, not only that, but I'll supply for you out of the riches of my glory in Christ Jesus. We got to take a stand. The princes. Scripture said they were like ferocious wolves. Ripping off the people. Ruining their lives. Killing them. Injuring them. This is what it's saying. Harming. Ravishing them in all kinds of ways. Why? To better themselves. They didn't care about the people they were supposed to be representing. Does that sound familiar? Are you hearing things that you supposedly believe that you're being represented? You're being represented by people that you thought you voted for and they're saying things that you absolutely don't believe or agree with, but they say they're representing you and you're afraid to vote them out because then, they'll, 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 then people will look at you like you're the bad guy. We better change, church. At some point, the church is going to get sick of being lied to. By government and media and big tech and celebrities. And at what point are we going to be smart enough to stop lapping up all of the excrement that they just keep serving out? How stupid are we to give a rip what an athlete thinks? What an actor or actress thinks? They can memorize a script and act, but they don't have the sense to come in out of the rain. And yet we just lap up everything they post out on social media and we just eat it up. Oh, they're right. They're right because they're famous. They're right because they're popular. And our children hear this mess. Parents, you better be careful about what your kids are listening to. I've been watching, Deb and I've been watching grandbabies all week. I'm going to tell you what, I know who Coco Melon is. I know about Masha and the bear. I'll guarantee you. I'm okay with the wheels on the bus going round and round because they really do. And the wipers do go swish, swish, swish. I don't give a dang. They just do. And the children go wah, wah, wah. And the mamas go shh, shh, shh. They, all that stuff happens. I guarantee you. It's okay. We can watch that. But let's be careful about some of the rest of it. That we're letting them watch and letting them see. Well, when I give them that tablet, they, they can stay quiet for hours. They'll stay quiet for hours. They'll stay quiet for days. 
you don't know what they're looking at. And there's people out there that it's not just the perverts, but there's people out there that have a, have a bad agenda. They have a bad plan for your children, and they want to try to indoctrinate them however they can through funny little songs and cartoons and things that look innocent. I'm preaching today. You may not like it. You may not come back, but you won't forget it. <laughs> Why are these people doing what they're doing? They don't do it because they care about you. They do it because they care about themselves. They care about the money, the power, the platform, the control that they get to lord over us. But church, it's time for us to stop listening and believe in their lies. And instead, we need, to be, we need to be bent on what God is still serving up. He's still serving up the truth and peace and love and rest and joy. These are the things we need. I don't need to be liked. I don't need likes. I just need to be reassured that I am loved by the one who created me and that he knows me and that he holds me and he's going to take me from here all the way home no matter what people do. The princes ravished the people. And lastly, in verse 29, the people oppressed themselves. Look at verse 29. And the people of the land have used oppression. What's oppression? It means Here it means fraud extortion and unjust gain the people of the land have used oppression and practiced robbery and they have troubled the poor and the needy yea they have troubled they have oppressed the stranger without right cev puts the same verse this way the people the people themselves cheat and rob they abuse the poor and take advantage of foreigners it means to violently rob deceive, and defraud others wow do you know is it just harder and harder to find an honest anybody anymore am i right can anybody remember back when a handshake meant something when somebody agreed to something and they shook hands and it actually meant something does anybody remember that does anybody remember a promise when somebody said i promise you that they actually meant that does anybody remember that when somebody said, I give you my word, that mean, didn't mean anything anymore. I'll tell you something. If you're transacting business today, you better get it in writing with an attorney present and then hope that the judge is honest when you get there. Because he may be on the take too. And it's sad to say that you can't trust anybody these days that's why we're all so leery of one another especially those who have been around 15 minutes or so you've been on this planet for more than 15 minutes somebody's tried to take advantage of you and the poor and the less intelligent and the vulnerable and the marginalized are the ones that suffer the most because there's nobody to defend them there's nobody to stand up for them there's nobody to protect them and that makes god angry i don't care which side of the politics you stand on I leave the united states this this what i'm talking about works on every continent there's not democrats and republicans in all these other countries there's just wicked people everywhere on the planet that get titles and names and figure out ways to take from people that aren't smart enough to keep it from happening and god says that makes me mad how, he said, Pastor, how do you know? I, I'm, I'm reading it right here. Look at this. Look at verse 30, 31. God said, and I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I wouldn't destroy it. And I found none. Therefore, have I poured out mine indignation upon them. I've consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed upon their heads, saith the Lord God. He said, I couldn't find nobody, so I just gave back on them what they've been trying to give back to everybody else. But unfortunately in that scenario, and this is the word, unfortunately in that scenario when God was saying, since I can't find a man, I'm pouring out my wrath, it got everybody. <laughs> even the good ones, because there were some good ones. But even the good ones... We're in the wake. And I'm telling you, folks, 
That's why you better have your stuff rock solid. Because when all this comes down and judgment hits this nation like it's coming, it's going to get us all. You say, we're not going to be exempt? No, we're not going to. Are you kidding me? You're the first one whose house they're going to try to take. Are you kidding? You're the first one that, 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 that the new world order needs to get rid of because you're the only thing standing in the way of perfect harmony and universal peace. You're the one who won't take the mark. You're the one that don't want the currency. You're the one that don't, you, you, you're, the, you're the one we got to get rid of. As soon as we get rid of you, we'll have peace. Don't fool yourself into thinking that God is miraculously going to keep you from any of the persecution or harm that's come. The only thing that's saving us, church, is the rapture. We're praying that happen right now because I'm going to tell you right now, I don't know what your prophets are telling you, but the word sounds to me, it looks to me, Jerry, like this ain't going to get better. It's going to keep getting worse until we leave. Does anybody believe that? I'm not looking looking for accolade. I'm just asking, do you believe that? Like, that's why I don't sell a lot of books. That's why we don't have five million followers on our Facebook page. I just want you to get home. I told you that two weeks ago. I want to get there and I want you to get out. I cannot bear to get there, look around, and think that somebody isn't there. Now, we hadn't talked about the women, but I'm going to say this. The women weren't blameless in all this either, I don't imagine. But this is a reproach on the men because they were supposed to be setting the example and leading everybody, and they failed miserably. That's why this is a reproach on the men. So where do we go from here? Well, we're left with a couple of questions based on this message in verse 30. A couple of questions, men. We're left with a couple of questions, sobering questions. The, question, the first question that we're left with here, dads, men, who will build back the walls of defense? He said, I look for somebody who would build up the hedge. He's talking about a wall. Well, what do they need a wall for? It was a place of defense. God's saying, I'm looking for some men that will stop oppressing each other and taking advantage of everybody and trying to rip each other off. I'm looking for some men who be honest enough and be valiant enough and be warriors and get out here and start building a wall so that they can defend everybody from this mess that's coming in. I, I, I'm looking for some men that will be more concerned with everybody than just themselves. I'm looking for some men that will start trying to defend everybody instead of just trying to get their own. I'm looking for some men that will stand up here and build a wall. What, what, how, what's it look like to build a wall, man? Here's what it looks like. Here's what it looks like. The walls of defense... Are the men standing shoulder to shoulder saying, your mess ain't coming in here to our wives and our children. Your lies are staying out there. Your manipulation is staying out there. Your control is staying out there. We men are going to make up a hedge and defend Everybody on this other side of it. God couldn't find one in the city of Jerusalem that would do that. They were all so busy. I just got done telling you all about what all four of them were. They were all so busy doing those things. And God couldn't find nobody. He couldn't get nobody together to go out there and defend. He said, go out and defend. Why did, why did judgment come to everybody? Wasn't nobody to defend them. There wasn't nobody to defend them. The pastor, we're going to be ostracized. We're, not going, to, we're going to be disliked. No, you're not. The Bible says you're going to be hated. Don't take it so easy on yourself. Jesus said, they're going to hate you like they did me. If you're going to be my follower, he said, you better get ready. They'll persecute you like they did me. What did they do to Jesus? They hung him on a cross. What did they do to all the prophets? We don't even know what happened to poor Jeremiah. Last we heard of him, he was still in the pit. We don't know where the pit is now, but his bones may be down in it. 
He yelled and screamed until there wasn't nobody left to listen. They finally quit dropping the bread and water in there because the enemy came in, did everything Jeremiah said they were going to do. And I suppose Jeremiah might have still been in the pit when they all left or died. Well, Pastor, that doesn't sound very comforting. I'll comfort you. The scriptures comfort one another with these words. Hmm? You know what's about to happen? Things are going to get ugly on this earth. They're going to get real ugly. It's going to get so bad that God's going to, you know, God's been sick of things on the planet before, hadn't he? Have you ever read the Bible? How many times has God destroyed? He's destroyed by, by water. He destroyed this way. He, he wipes out these. He opens up the earth, swallows all these folks. He, he just gets sick of stuff. After a while, he just starts taking things. But he's going to get so sick of this that one day he's going to burn the whole mess down. I'm talking everything. And then John said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The new earth coming down. I love it. I love the description. I don't care what happens to this. I don't care what happens to this. The verse of the day was, what, profit, what, what will it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? What are you trying? What, what is worth you lying and cheating and stealing here for that's going to burn up? It's all going to burn up. So, Pastor, what are you going to comfort me with? I'll comfort you with this. There's going to be some crowns of life given to some people who overcome. There's going to be some rewards given to some people who overcome. There's going to be some people that rule and reign with Christ. There's going to be some people that, that, live with, that live with Jesus forever in eternity. And do you think for one minute we're going to give a rip about the 15 minutes that we were persecuted on this earth when we're enjoying millions of years with Jesus? Do you think we're going to care? No. And he's coming too. Behold, I come quickly. Who'll build back the walls of defense? Who'll take a chance? Who'll be the one that says, I'm gonna stand, I'm gonna take a stand. It don't matter what happens, they're not gonna, it's not getting past here. I'm gonna protect what my I'm gonna protect what my kids hear. Somebody say amen. I'm gonna start getting in their business and finding out what they're listening to. Somebody say amen. I'm gonna get I'm gonna find out what they're looking at. I'm gonna find out who they're talking to. I'm gonna figure out who their friends are. I'm gonna I'm not I'm gonna quit letting my my kids run their own life. Some people say, Well, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna force my kids to go to church and live. Do you make them brush their teeth? What's more important, their teeth or their soul? Well, I don't want my kids to grow up and hate the church. You want them to grow up where, where, where you want them to grow up and what do you want them to grow up and, and hate? I mean, I don't even know what to tell you. I don't want them to grow up and be angry. I don't want to. I don't want them. To, uh, I don't want them to to run away. What you, what you gonna do? You gonna you gonna keep them from going to hell number two or hell number three or hell number? Five? I mean, there ain't but one hell. We don't want nobody there. Whatever it, guys, men, men, I'm talking to you, dads. Whatever we gotta do. Whatever we got to do to get them home, we're going to do it. If it costs us everything, fellas, if it costs us our money, if it costs us our life, if it, co if it costs us our job, we're going to take a stand and build up a hedge. Somebody say amen. And the next thing he asks is who will stand in the gap and intercede? You know what the gap is? The gap is the vulnerable, dangerous place. The gap is the spot where there isn't a wall, where there isn't a line of defense. That's where the man stands who says, I'm going to stand in the danger spot. I'll stand in the spot that nobody else, where everybody else is running from, I'm going to run to because it's the right thing to do. I'm going to stand in the gap and intercede for everybody huh what's interceding the Lord said to Ezekiel I look for a man to stand a gap and I couldn't find one he was looking for one he's still looking for one what will he do now if he finds one he'll hear that person interceding so if we get shoulder to shoulder we build up a wall and then the, and then the places where we're vulnerable and defenseless we put somebody in the gap and somebody stands in the gap and we intercede guess what God will hear us God will protect us. Will we all come out of this unscathed? No, but we won't care. We'll all get home. 
Who will make up the hedge? Who will stand in the gap and intercede? And the third question is, who will be the man that God is looking for? Man, years ago, I'll tell you how, back in the 90s, y'all remember the group called For Him? Anybody remember the, 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 the guys For Him? And they sang a song. I still remember it says, I want to be a man. I want to be a man that you would write about. A thousand years from now, I want to be a man who heard the voice of God and was willing to take a stand. I, like they, I get that, every once in a while that song comes back to me. I'm like, I want to be that man. I want to be, not that I need the accolades of being remembered a thousand years from now. I'm, I'm saying I want Jesus to remember me. I want him to know me, right? I want to be a man. Pray it, I pray it all the time. God, make me, make me the kind of person that, that, that lives a life that, that walks worthy of your name and call. God, I don't want to die an old fool. I don't ever want to be that guy that goes out and my legacy is something other than who I was my whole life. I don't want to make one stupid decision and then they be remembered for that instead of all the good ones that I made. I don't want my wife and my children and my grandbabies and my church to ever have to be ashamed of me. Guys, let's live with that kind of responsibility. Next time you get on your computer. Huh? Next time you get on your phone. Think about it. I want to be the guy that's remembered for being a man of integrity and honesty and character. I want to be the man that when, if God was to come down to Fayetteville today, say, I'm looking for somebody, you say, I'm here. And then he'll look at you and say, you know what? You are. Because there'd be some that might try to do it just because they think it would kind of be cool. And God would say, well, I don't even know you. But, but how, about, how about if you were the man, the dad that God could count on? Who will join me in this prayer this morning and say, Pastor, I'll build back the walls of defense. I'll stand in the gap and intercede. I'll be the man that God is looking for. Who will do that? God's conducting a manhunt. Are you the one he's looking for? Are you the one he's looking for? Who will join me in that prayer? If you'll join me in that prayer, men, whoever, I'm not manipulating. Don't, don't come down if you don't want to. But any of the men in this, any of the dads and the men in this room and say, I'm going to be that guy. I want you to come and join me right here in the front. Come on. Any of you that will, come down here and join me in the front. I'll be that man. I'll be that man. I'll, I'll risk it all. Every man right now who says, God, make me a brick in that wall of defense. Make me a, make me a column in that wall of defense. Every one of you to say, God, I'm, I want in that wall. Make me a portion of that wall of defense. I will defend my family. I will defend my children. I will defend my wife. I will defend my city. I'll defend my church. I'll defend my country. Come on. I'll defend the word of God. I'll defend what is right. I'll defend loving every person regardless of their color or their language. I'll defend loving every person regardless of what they're struggling with as far as sin in their life. I'll still love them. I'll still pray for them. I'll still back them. I'll still link arms with guys that I know are they're living in sin, but I'll still link arms with them in hopes that, that they'll be able to overcome the things like I've had to overcome. I will stand in that wall I'll be a portion of that fence all of you guys that say I'll do that right now just lift up both of your hands and say Lord here I am and I this is my sign of surrender I surrender my body my mind my money my soul my I surrender everything I am to you if you're looking for somebody Lord to stand if you're looking for somebody Lord to form up the hedge if you're looking for somebody, God, to be a brick in the wall, I'm here. Put me wherever you can use me in that wall, Lord. Wherever you need me, put me in that wall. Every man is say, God, 
I'm willing to step out in the uncomfortable place. I'm willing to step out in the place that is vulnerable. I'm willing to stand in the gap where it doesn't feel all that secure. I'm willing to take the ridicule, the sneers, the jeers, the persecution in order to be the man you're looking for. If that's you, keep your hands up and tell him that right now. God, I'll stand, I'll stand in the gap. I'll stand in the gap. I'll stand in the dangerous place. I'll stand there and I'll intercede. God, I'll be a wall. I'll stand in the gap. I'll pray. I'll seek you. I'll do my best to lead my family. I'll do my best to be a voice. I'll do my best to be the man that you put me on this planet to be. And every man that says, God, I'll be the man you're looking for. I'm going to do my best, Lord. I'll fail. I know I'm going to fail because I always do. I know I'll fall. I know there'll be days that I'll make mistakes. There'll be times that I'll sin. But God, know my heart. Know my heart. Know my intentions. And know that I want nothing more in this life than to be the man that you call me to be. And now, God, would you break our hearts? Would you break our hearts for the lost among us? For the fatherless among us? For the poor among us? For the lonely among us? For the hurting among us? God, would you break our big old callous, tough hearts? God, big old men, would you make us tender and broken and contrite before you so that we can love like you love? Lead like you lead. Live like you live. Help us, I pray. And now as they lead us in this song, fellas, just stand here in this altar. Stand in His presence. and Just let the Holy Spirit do a work in your life. They're going to lead us in this song. Let's just take some time all over the church, wherever you're at. Men, women, anywhere in the building. Come on, just, just enter into this season of prayer. Just pray right there where they're at. Right, right where you're at. But guys, you here in this altar. Come on, take this challenge right now. And let the Holy Spirit really dig this into your spirit. Dig these words into your heart. Come on, come on. Lead us.